Hello students, in today's lecture, we are going to verify the very famous Stephen's law by electrical method. For this, the apparatus required is a battery, a rheostat to vary the current, key setup, ammeter for measuring current, voltmeter for measuring the voltage, a tungsten filament bulb, and few connecting wires. The ammeter and voltmeter, first we will check out the least count. As you can see here, between 0 and 100, there are 10 divisions. So one division is reading 10 milliampere. In order to change it into ampere, we will multiply it by 10 to the power of minus 3. Similarly, here in the voltmeter, we can see 10 divisions are showing 2 volt. So, one division is showing 0.2 volt. We should be careful while noting the readings. The battery eliminator, our tungsten filament bulb, we are assuming as approximately a black body and try to take readings at the just glow position. Rheostat, which is used to vary the current in the circuit. So, what is Stephen's law? The ra energy radi emitted per second per unit area of a black body at temperature T Kelvin is given by E is equal to sigma into T to the power of 4, where sigma is known as Stephen's constant and its mathematical value is 5.6 into 10 to the power of minus 8 Weber per meter square Kelvin to the power of 4. We will make a very simple circuit here in series and plot a graph between log P and log T and find the slope of this graph. If the slope comes out approximately 4, our experiment is verified. Why slope 4? Because from Stephen's law, E is equal to sigma T to the power of 4. If we take log on both sides, we get log E is equal to log sigma plus 4 log T. If we compare this equation to that of a straight line, we observe that the slope M is equal to 4. So if our straight line uh, graph gives us an approximate 4 value of slope, the experiment will be verified. So, we begin the experiment. It consists of two observation tables. In the first observation table, we will find the value of R0. For this, R0 or resistance at 273 Kelvin. For this, we will first increase the current in rheostat and try to get the just glow position of the bulb. At that moment, this is the just glow position. We will note the voltage and current here. And from Ohm's law, we note that resistance is voltage upon current. Similarly, in the second table, we will again find the just glow position with decreasing current. And then we will find the mean Rg. In order to find R0 at this temperature, the contribution of lead resistance becomes small by a factor nearly 3.9 at 800 Kelvin compared to that at 273 Kelvin. So, for R0, we will divide this value by 3.9. This way, the first observation table will be taken. In the second, see the just glow position and the readings of your voltmeter and ammeter in the just glow position for increasing and decreasing current which will obviously be approximately the same. So my observation table, current increasing, current decreasing, from this is the value of current. I have read it in milliampers. I will change it to amperes and voltage and I get the value of R0. Now for the second table, I need temperature and power in the full glow position. This is my tungsten filament bulb behaving like an approximate black body. So 
I will glow the bulb full with the help of a rheostat and note the readings at various intervals of voltage and the corresponding current which I am obtaining. Like here you can see on the screen, this reading will give me one volt and the current will be 90 milliampere. Similarly, like this, I will keep noting the readings for voltage and current, varying my voltage to say 5, 5 volt like this. So, 1 volt, the current is 0 0.075 ampere. Resistance becomes voltage upon current from Ohm's law. Power is voltage into current and temperature T is equal to 1 upon alpha, where the value of alpha is 51 into 10 to the power of minus 4 into RT, which I have got from this table, divided by R0, which we found in table 1 as 2.27 minus 1 plus 273. Then once we get T, we will take log base 10 P and log base 10 T. Now we will vary the voltage, say from 1 to 2.1. 2.2, 2.6, 3.2, 3. small intervals and corresponding current we will note. Rest calculations we will do and then plot a graph between log P and log T. We can observe certain negative values coming. So the graph will go in the negative quadrant. Then we will accordingly choose a suitable scale on the graph paper and Accordingly, we will see that see it is going in the negative quadrant. So this is how we will choose the graph. We will get a straight line. Best fit line out of all the points plotted, we will pick out the best fit line having maximum number of points lying on it. And the graph of log P versus log T will be a straight line giving a slope approximately round about 4, we can find percentage error with standard value 4. And hence, this is how we are going to verify our Stephen's law. The biggest precaution of this experiment is that current should not be increased too much. Otherwise, your tungsten filament bulb will fuse. And some time interval you should take in taking the consecutive Readings. Thank you.